G'day guys, it's Rick from Rick Chat RC. Welcome back to another video. It has been a few weeks between flights, but I have been busy. I have been working on other things, and I'm about to update you on where I'm at and what I've been up to. So, I think when I last left you, you might remember my faithful chuck glider. This gave me nothing but grief. It, uh, it never flew properly straight out of the box, I must admit, before I made any alterations to it. So I think converting it to a chuck glider, an RC chuck glider, powered at that, just made it worse, just exacerbated the whole problem. Anyway, I did say I am throwing this in the bin, and figuratively speaking, I have thrown this in the bin. I've still got it around because I'm using it as a template for measurements and design and form and contour and all of that type of stuff for my other scratch builds and one other thing I'd like to mention when I took the electronics off this because I was using it in my other scratch builds I found out I had three intermittent servo failures only the main three the rudder, the elevator and the ailerons uh, that might explain why when I was flying it or when I was attempting to fly it uh, I gave it full left aileron and nothing happened. It just decided to go on its own, turn in the opposite direction and spiral to the ground. Um, so I tell you what, there's nothing like thinking you can't fly properly when you have servo failure or radio failure. That's the worst thing. But anyway, I have put this to rest and uh, we'll move on. You might also remember this baby. This is a foam board scratch build that I've been working on. I've got a little mini build series on it, which I have uh, been continuing with, and it's called the Raven. It's uh, an Axon derivative from Experimental Airlines, thanks to the uh, thanks to the inspiration that I got from Ed. So check out his. Uh, YouTube channel if you'd like to know a little bit more about where I got all my ideas from and the inspiration that came from that. So in essence, uh, I think when I last left you, I showed you how I put together the folding wing. So this plane's now 98% complete, uh, the whole thing, not just the wing. And at the 11th hour, I realized I've got some balancing issues. So in essence, it's too tail heavy, which I'm a bit disappointed about, I have to say. And I think that's come about because our foam board here in Australia is a lot heavier than the Dollar Tree foam board you guys use overseas. So apart from the design, apart from the adjustments I've made, um, I've had to make some more over and above. And I finally got the balance right with those adjustments. And I think I've improved the overall shape and design too in doing so. So stay tuned. There's the final complete video coming up on this in the next, if not couple of days, the next couple of weeks or so. And uh, look out for it, you won't be disappointed. So, what have I been working on in the meantime? Well, as a replacement for the chuck glider, which is no more, I've put together what I wanted to... i put together another experimental scratch build to replace that chuck glider and this is it it's a pod and boon design the rudder the elevator all replaceable if something happens I'm using a KF airfoil I'll explain what those what those cutouts in the wing are a little bit later on this is the uh, the pod of course this is the hatch where everything's inside it's uh, something quick and easy that I put together. I wanted to get back in the air quickly. It's still waiting for its maiden, so I don't have any flight video. In fact, it's been so experimental, I don't even have a build video on this yet. So if you are interested in what you see, if you like what you see, comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff also. Um, ask me any questions. I'm happy to provide details, measurements, etc, etc. Um, the other thing I want to mention is this here is not just a motor mount, it is a removable, adjustable motor mount. I'll show you a little bit later on how that works. Um, as I said, I'm waiting for its maiden 
and at the moment it's uh, 43 degrees today and windy as hell so there's no way I'm taking this up but uh, there will be a flight video one way or the other soon so stay tuned more is coming up in a moment So this is my brand new aeroplane that I've put together. It's a simple pot and boom style design. I've used foam for everything, 5mm foam. I've used the carbon arrow shaft for the boom. I've simply cut out the elevator and the aileron out of foam sheets. Colored it, covered it rather with colored packing tape. I've used a KF airfoil. It's a three-step KF airfoil for the main wing. I've got an access hatch at the front, which is that yellow piece you can see there where all the electronics go into. That's the side profile of the pod and the boom together. Aileron servos have been fitted underneath. Rudder and elevator servos are at the back. That's a view of this plane from all angles. I can accommodate the CG for any battery size by simply moving it forward or backwards inside that pod. That's a close-up of the pod now. The aileron lead going into the front section of the body there. The main wing held down by elastic bands. That's a closer close-up view of the main wing with the cutouts. I've covered those cutouts with clear packing tape. The two wing halves are held together with a carbon arrow shaft. There's also a bit of dihedral in that wing, which I will explain as we go along. So I've made the same cutouts to both sides of the wing halves. That carbon arrow shaft, by the way, is simply hot glued in position. That's a view of the three-step KF airfoil I've used the ailerons that follow this is the vertical stabilizer close up of the servo and the push rods that are held in place that's the horizontal stabilizer servo in position push rod in position everything's held together by double sided scotch tape so that's easily removed easily replaceable Colored packing tape on all surfaces. Another angle of the main wing where you can see the KF airfoil design. The other side of the pod. That yellow hatch at the front simply opens and closes. That's the motor I'm using. There's an adjustable motor mount there, which I'm going to explain a little bit more later on also. Aileron lead going into the front section of the body. That's the electronics section inside the hatch. The hatch door is open at the moment. Everything fits in there nicely, including the battery. That's a, another close-up view of the three-step KF airfoil that I used for this plane. I wanted to create as much lift as I possibly could. It's the motor and the propeller with the motor mount in position. 
another close up of the front pod with the access hatch there the wing is just held down with elastic bands that's all that's required nothing special there that's the boom coming out of the fuselage or the pod held together with three pieces of block balsa for, for extra strength all the uh, servo wiring held in position with electrical tape and a close-up view of the elevator servo and the horizontal stabilizer with the push rod in place that's the vertical stabilizer once again with the rudder servo in position held together by double-sided scotch tape I'm simply using the Tower Pro plastic gear servos for this model don't need anything else it's a close-up view of the hatch where all the electronics go in that's the yellow ESC there on the left the receiver on the right velcro to the side walls got velcro on the floor so I can position any size battery forward or aft to accommodate the center of gravity as needed. And that's the hatch door open and it simply lifts and closes like so. The body is covered with colored packing tape also. Colored packing tape used throughout the whole build. No paint. So this is what the main wing looked like when I finished it with no cutouts. I wanted to make the wing much lighter than it was. So I decided to cut out those holes or those slots, those sections as you can see. I did that to both sides of the main wing. I haven't impacted on the strength in any way and so as not to leave gaping holes in the wing I recovered those areas with clear packing tape so I think it leaves a very nice finish it's a fantastic talk fantastic talking point at the flying field and I have to say I think it's going to look pretty good in the air too so the servos have been hot glued into position Ailerons in place, push rods in place. I've used a Y lead to connect the two aileron servos together, coming into one lead. I've secured the aileron servo leads with sticky tape underneath the wing so they don't flop around. And they're still easily detached if need be if you need to do so so the wing used to weigh about 350 360 grams after those cutouts it now weighs 300 grams so I'm really happy with that that includes with the servos in position and everything it's almost a flying wing on its own Now when I drop this wing, it actually feels like it wants to fly. It's amazing. So I hope it does the job when it's on the plane and I'll take it for a test flight. Here I'm going to show you the dihedral angle I've put on the main wing. So when I was building this as a trainer, it started out being a flat wing. I thought, well, I may as well try and put some dihedral since it's a trainer. So I've managed to put a little bit. I've done a lot, but it's not flat anymore. And I've secured that angle by using the carbon arrow shaft, which not only holds the two wing halves together, but holds the angle in place. And I've simply hot glued the carbon arrow shaft into position to get that angle. As I said, this whole plane is experimental and I hope it's a wonderful surprise when it's flying in the air. 
that's close up of the carbon arrow shaft. It sits a little higher in the middle, that's where the angle is greatest. But it's secure, stiff, and there will be no wing flex with this plane. I've just hot glued that carbon arrow shaft into position and it works really really well. I'm happy with that. Flying it will be the final test. Here I'm going to show you how the adjustable removable motor mount works. So I used three layers of gift cards to achieve this with a slot or a cutout in the middle equivalent to the width of the flat aluminium piece that I used to create the motor mount itself. I sandwiched those three gift cards together with Gorilla Glue. I found hot glue didn't really do the job properly. And then I slide with a degree of force that aluminium piece into position. So to pull it out I simply pull up. If I need to adjust the uh, height I can leave it in that position or I can continue to pull it all the way out. That also allows me to put in a brand new mount with a different motor and a different propeller if need be. Now, it doesn't just slide in and out so I don't think it's going to fly out or slip out during flight. But I'll see what happens when I take it for a test flight. I'll simply push it back down into position, push the leads back into place, and it's, it's pretty much there, ready to go. Now for added security, I've got some tape around those gift cards, those three layers of gift cards, just in case the glue decides to come loose, which I don't think it will. But I did that anyway as extra security. So we'll see how she goes. I found that there is a little bit of vibration between mid-range throttle to full throttle and then it finds the sweet spot and everything's okay. So hopefully I've got some good feedback for you when I finally take it on a test flight and yeah it's something I decided to try. If it works it works great if it doesn't at least I've tried something. I didn't want to use the uh, double-sided scotch tape on this occasion. So here I am going to show you all the electronics connected with the control surfaces in motion, including the running motor. So I'm simply taking the main wing off at the moment. So I'm disconnecting the aileron lead, or about to. That's how you assemble and disassemble the connection point there for the main wing. And uh, now I'm going to show you the overall pot and boom design on its own. This is basically the profile of what this plane looks like without the main wing on it. Could be used for a gyrocopter, could be used for anything. So another brief glimpse of the motor mount slipping in and out as needed. So completely removable at will and stays in place under force. So no chance of it slipping out. So now I'm going to put the main wing back in place. I'm not going to secure it this time with elastic bands, no need for this demonstration. But I will reconnect the aileron 
and show you the control services in motion. So to assemble it, I simply push that lead through the hole in the pod and connect it to the aileron lead coming out of the receiver. So I'm connecting the aileron lead now. Close the hatch. I'll go and grab my radio and I'll show you everything in motion. Here we have it, the ailerons. Ailerons are moving nicely, the elevator is moving nicely, and the rudder is moving nicely. Here's the motor. I'm a mode 1 flyer by the way, so my throttle is always on the right. That's how I learnt all those years ago. Just going to give you a close-up view of the rear section where the elevator and the rudder is. Operating beautifully just as I intended. So I'm looking forward to flying this. She's pretty much ready to go. Thank <laughs> you.